Hey, we are live. Good to see everybody back. Great to be here. Today is a very special episode of Ryan's live stream here on the ZBrush uh, live stream. Uh, we're doing some, we're celebrating a couple things today. Uh, yesterday was my birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and also we're celebrating Halloween slash Dia de los Muertos. So, uh, what is everybody doing for Halloween? Greetings to Jamaica, Jace Cover. And then uh, Steamworks, good to see you. Nightbot, you're not a person, you're a bot. I guess you can be here anyway. All right. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Hold on a sec. I just have to fix one thing really quick. I have to find my reference of this guy. All right. So, uh, so while I'm pulling up the reference, what's everybody doing to celebrate Halloween? I like to keep the spirit of Halloween the year round, you know what I mean? It's not not just a October 31st kind of thing, so, so I like to celebrate all year round. Hey DT Gaming. All right, so you may see up here, this is my interface. <laughs> this is my custom interface here for ZBrush. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit special, um, so it's it's made for three monitors. So all of my work in the canvas is in my main monitor, and then I've got the, the uh, UI stretched down into a monitor that's just below that, which is my left. To the left, I've got a third monitor, which is vertical. That's where I've got it stretched out, and I have my sub-tool list, tool palette on the left side. So uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy to, to look at this while I'm working, so I'll just go ahead and switch this back to just the canvas. Oh, Shane, uh, thanks for the birthday wishes. Um, you don't celebrate Halloween in, uh, in Great Britain? Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that. That's a shame. Uh, walking the kiddos around for candy. Classic. Uh, I'm actually right-handed. So we're just going to continue working on this guy here today. Um, yeah, I'm just going to finish up coloring him and posing him. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking maybe it'll be done today. We'll see. We'll see how far I get. Let's see if I can remember the techniques I was using for coloring this guy last week. Let's grab some color from the from the face. Thanks, Steamworks. Don't know what color of pants this guy wears. I'll just try to pick something that seems like it goes with the color scheme of everything else. Let's see, blue pants. He does kind of seem like a navy blue pants kind of guy. Uh, yeah, it definitely could be a 3D print. There's really nothing about this piece that uh, wouldn't work well as a 3D print. Yeah. 
You got it, DT Gaming. If only you were here when I first started this piece. Um, I do a contest every time I start a piece, and the first person who guesses what it is I'm sculpting wins a free copy of my plugin called Ryan's Tools. And uh, so it's looking like I'll probably finish this piece this week, which means starting a new piece next week, which means new contest, new giveaway. Let's see how I can isolate this hand so I'm not painting on the fingers while I paint the palm. Hey, yes, sir. Glad to hear. Oops, I forgot I have, um, I had a thing, toggle uh, the mask by polygroups. I had it set up so that painting would only occur on um, the same polygroup I start the brush stroke on. So I just had to turn that off. And we're just trying to get a little bit of uh, color variation in this. pencil holder. My, my ZBrushing is causing my whole desk to shake and my pencil holder to rattle around. So I'm just computing a uh, ambient occlusion pass so that I can kind of darken up the, the creases inside the wrinkles. So in the meantime, I'm going to type in the chat a link to my plugin. If anybody's interested in that, it's a lot of cool features that uh, just make ZBrush work a lot faster. How can I zoom in ZBrush when I'm using a digital pen? Um, it's a good question, Sina. It's um, it's kind of the same. Uh, so there's a couple different ways actually. There is 
uh, in the in the main so if you're using the regular uh, ZBrush interface um, on the right side before the tool palette there's going to be a button that's uh, zoom 3d or you just click and drag on that you can zoom with that um, what I like to do is uh, just so I actually have a plugin uh, it's uh, where is it it's a middle button preset so you can set up a custom uh, keys that take into effect the the middle button of a mouse or and so what I do is I map that to the the uh, the Wacom tablet the button that's farthest away from the tip to the uh, actually that no that's a right click so the, the middle button I use is the uh, I guess the one that's in between the the tip and the furthest button anyway um, yeah it's just kind of mimics how everything works in Maya so since I already know you know, the Maya interface, I knew that before I learned ZBrush. Uh, it's just kind of most convenient to use that interface or that um, navigation style. So, uh, yeah, check out the plugin Middle Mouse uh, for ZBrush. So yeah, calculating another ambient occlusion pass on the other hand. Anybody here from Mexico? Anybody celebrating Dia de los Muertos? See if we can hide this desk. I do love the way I can group things now in the uh, the subtool list in the little folders. It'd be great if I could do subfolders now and like really organize things. Hopefully Maxon will do that. <laughs> Dave Navon. You win the Bad Pun of the Day Award.
the Zimrush Summit coming up. I almost forgot about that. November 13th to 16th. All right, let's see if I can use uh, the noisemaker to put a pattern on the tie. I'm not sure if I've tried to do something. It's not a super complicated pattern. It's just a simple stripe pattern. But let's play around with some settings, see what we can do. So one thing I want to do is uh, make sure it unwraps this in a useful way. So let's see, I'm going to group front and then unwrap by polygroups.
And let's see if there's any noise makers that already have kind of a just a simple stripe pattern. Kind of. Oh, that's weird. 3D, let's see. I'm changing the angle. Oh, yeah, almost getting something good. So let's see what we can do. Let's get a color here. Let's see, he's got kind of a dark green. And the other color is a light green. Almost what I like. I don't like that it's the same. Let's see if I can flip it for the uh, the knot. Let me save it really quick. How are people dealing with the uh, change of seasons? Feels like it's just been about uh, three or four days in Portland, Oregon, since the weather turned kind of cloudy and gloomy and rainy. Uh, it just always hits me like a like a punch to the face when it's no longer warm and sunny. Makes me want to run off to Mexico City or something, somewhere warm. Okay, so I'm gonna try to edit the UVs. The layout did something weird. Sometimes it does this where it like doesn't lay things out quite right. Hey llama, you're late. Go sit in the corner. <laughs> That's your punishment for being late this time. Okay, so this is almost doing what I want. Looks like I just have to rotate that one piece a little bit more.
like I have to rotate a little bit more. It's, it's just so confusing. I hate editing UVs in ZBrush. Okay, there we go. Now we got it going in the opposite direction. And actually one small edit I want to make. Need to make sure that the size is right. Cool. All right, so let's see. We'll copy the UVs from the edit version and then paste them into the subdivided version. Yes. Nice, it actually worked. All right, let's see if we can do the same thing with the shirt. figure out where I can cut the seams to get a nice layout. Yeah, I get weird things like that. Yeah, it's just going to be a bit of manual futzing around with the uh, the layout here to get something nice. It shouldn't be too hard. Okay, almost got it. Sweet. Now if I can lay out the UVs according to these poly groups, then it should, uh, the pattern should cut nicely at the seams. Actually, you know what? There's one last thing I want to do before I get into that. I want to get rid of, I want to actually like create a uh, the cuff seam opening.
It's a nice little feature of, oh, you know what? I messed it up. It's actually, it's actually something I got to fix in Ryan's tools is uh, when you go to delete something where there's, uh, there's just a single strip of polygons, it doesn't quite work right. All right, I'll just do it the manual way. All right. Hey Camila, how's things going in Brazil? So there is a specific way I like to create collars for clothing. Um, it's a little complicated, it's hard to describe, uh, but um, 
Yeah, it basically involves uh, creating the the shirt without a collar and then uh, picking the edges where the collar should be and just extruding those out. So I'm going to change up how I cut this because it looks like he needs another seam across here. Oh, nice. Somebody, somebody kicked the spammer out pretty fast. Good job, whoever that was. Unfortunately, I don't have an edge loop that like neatly follows where that seam should go. So I'm just going to really quick, just kind of like force there to be one where I want there to be one. Of course it didn't stick once I went up the subdivision levels. All right, that's close enough. All right, that should be good for the panels I want to make for the shirt. Let's see how that looks. Okay, cool. I can work with that. So work on clone and then let's see, let's uh, edit the UVs on this and I just want to just get things oriented nicely. So the stripes come out straight. This one needs a little help getting straight. Copy the UVs, go back to the original model, paste UVs, just make sure they look right, 
right and now let's try to get another noise maker on this so let's see the shirt is basically white I'm gonna make it slightly off-white noise UVs noise plug and let's use I think corrugated ribbon okay and we'll set the color to I guess we'll do like a dark brown mm, let's see strength okay here we go we're starting to starting to dial it in now uh, let's see hopefully the I can edit the noise so that the uh, so that the lines are thinner actually I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do that I think the both the light and the dark are gonna have to be the same thickness tell me that's not true Okay, let's try a different one. Let's see, can't checkerboard. I don't think that's going to work either. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe gradient? Nope, that's not going to work. Grid? Hmm, if I can stretch that out so that we only get grid in one direction, that might work. No, I don't think that's going to work. All right, we're going to Photoshop, guys. I'm going to make it so simple in Photoshop. the shirt pattern all right so now we've got that saved back to ZBrush and let's see let's turn off noise plug put on an alpha load up that thing I made in Photoshop change the alpha scale look at how look how much easier that was all right I want that line to be a little thicker though so I'm gonna go back to Photoshop and just kind of scale the size of that a little bit save it turn the alpha off reload it that's looking great look at that compared it's pretty much perfect Oh, wait, I don't want any noise in that, though. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, mix basic noise. I don't want any basic noise in there. Nothing. Actually, I'll put a very small amount just for variation. Ah, now he's coming together. Miguel Angel, hola, como estas? We got Charleston Pro, Charleston Pro, hey. Getting into the home stretch on this guy. I'm gonna bake a little bit of ambient occlusion into his shirt, because why not? Painting onto the cuff, which I didn't want it to do. So, uh, Bracciano, uh, good question. I mean, it's, it totally depends on what kind of production you're working on. Um, is it games? Is it movies? What kind of budget is there? Is it a hero character? Um, you know, how complicated is the character? It could take, I mean, I want to say making Gollum for the first Lord of the Rings. I mean, it took forever. I think they took like a, over a year. Um, I think it could take as little as a week. Um, if it's like a simple cartoony character, it's a background character. I mean, maybe a day. So yeah, it just totally depends. All right, so we're just moving right along on this guy. A uh, little bit more to do before I want to pose him. I want to put just a little bit of stuff on his desk. Nothing too complicated. He's got, he's got like uh, some standard office supplies on his desk. I'm not going to put like too much time into doing all of this stuff, but let me put just a little bit of stuff on his desk.
little meteor. I don't get it. Sorry, you'll have to explain. Oh, a little meteor like the meteor that destroyed the dinosaurs. That's a good joint. That's good. I'm just going to close this up a little bit. So that we can't peek through. And reveal the fact that I didn't model his arms. I'm such a bad 3D modeler. Stapler. The stapler he stole from Milton. get some thickness on the shirt. Make sure the legs of the desk come down to the same level as the feet. Okay, cool. They do. All right. Yeah, let me try to do a stapler real fast. Let's see if I can speed run a stapler. Uh, I'm just going to start making it in a separate scene just so it's not like bogged down. This is when holodeck comes in handy so I can stay oriented in 3D space more easily. So changing the background, uh, that is part of Ryan's tools. If you get my plugin, uh, I'll type it in here to the chat. So that's a feature in the plugin called uh, Holodeck. So it just helps you stay organized in 3D space. I'm also doing a stapler from memory. So we'll just see how it goes here, people. It's gonna be kind of a simple cartoony stapler, honestly.
Well, Carrot Head, I guess it's because this chat is open to the public and just anybody can chat in here. My plugin also has a quick and easy way to pop in primitives. Uh, you can do it with ways that are built into ZBrush, but my way gets it done quicker and faster and easier. That's a real simple cartoony stapler for you. Another feature of Ryan's tools, um, you can snap the pivot point to the bottom of objects to make it easier for like positioning them on the surface of objects, right? And then if you want to change the scale of it, oh, that was weird. Okay. Huh. The materials got removed from all, all my objects, and I don't know why. So, Lama, is your question how, how ZBrush handles basic modeling work, like um, sort of like box modeling or simple poly modeling? Oh no, ZBrush just crashed. That was really lame. Uh, ZBrush is okay for basic poly modeling work. Um, I like Maya better for that, but uh, you can do some pretty decent stuff. Uh, it's not it's ter it's not terrible. Um, well, actually, I will be I will say there's some things I really don't like about poly modeling in ZBrush. One of them being that you can't have um, any polygons that have more than four sides at any moment. Now, it's typically bad modeling to have a finished model with more than uh, five sides or more than four sides. But uh, while you're working, it's really useful if you can um, temporarily have uh, an end gone or a model or a polygon with more than four sides so that you can like like rework your edge flow um, and then then when you're done reworking your edge flow you just make sure that you've got four sided polygons again uh, before you export it for anything else but uh, zbrush will not allow that at any moment and so that actually kind of makes a lot of uh, modeling tasks harder than they need to be so let's go ahead and reload the model that i saved half an hour ago. <sighs> it breaks the heart every time.
<laughs> is that your fault, Llama? No. No, I don't think that was your fault. What did we lose? Okay, we got to do the shirt again. Oh, no. We even lost the part where I cut the, the cuff open. I guess we're doing that again, too. Oh, yeah, we lost where I I'm, did the UVs and everything. Uh, let's see. Maybe there was there a quick save? No, no quick save. Oh, you guys, I'm so upset. Well, let's just do everything I did in the last half hour all over again. How about that? I'll do it faster this time. <laughs> Andrew, you just joined. The reason why I'm not chatting is because I'm really pissed off because ZBrush just crashed and I lost 30 minutes of work. And I'm basically just kind of redoing what I had just done. And I'm, I'm in no mood to chat right now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to chat. Actually, it'd be nice if anybody had a question or anything to distract myself from the misery I'm in right now. Having just lost some work.
What about the save button? Well, the save button works, but I don't want to hit it every five minutes. That's just... So I hit it like every 30 minutes, and I was just about to save. And so I lost 30 minutes worth of work. I mean, I had saved it earlier. I saved it at the 30 minute mark. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes you get in the flow and you don't want to stop and think about saving all the time. Ooh, Mike Wellington, good good question. Um, what led me to pursuing this as a career? Uh, so when I was a kid, I saw Tron, and then I saw Jurassic Park and Toy Story, and I just thought that um, using using computers and art together was just the coolest thing I'd ever seen, and I wanted to uh, work at Pixar or ILM or, or something like that. And so, yeah, I just, uh, every opportunity, I mean, we're talking back in the, the 90s when I was a teenager, like they're just, you, you weren't, there weren't computers that the average person could afford that would do this stuff. Um, that started to happen late 90s, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I would go on the internet, the very, very uh, rudimentary late 90s internet and uh, there were some forums, people talking about making 3D um, and stuff. I didn't have a computer or software for any of that, but I would just read the forums and like just kind of absorb what people were talking about. And uh, then when I uh, went off to college in like um, early 2000s, got myself a computer, got myself some software, and sat down and taught myself. 3D Studio Max actually was the first thing. And Rhino. Um, and then yeah, it's just uh it just spiraled up from there. What about you guys? Any uh, any stories about what got you all interested in this type of stuff? Well, good luck. Same field.
Young Sherlock Holmes. You know what's amazing? I've still never seen that movie. I heard it was actually a pretty good movie, too. fit together better last time. Why won't it fit together this time? There we go. Old fashioned UV layout skills for the win. Show you the tools I'm using. Uh, there, take a screenshot, it'll last longer. I, I mean, I'm just talking about the tools I'm using as I go, so hopefully people can pick up some tips here and there. And blender. Not even close. Sure is faster the second time now that I've figured it out. Just checking really quick how this looks with uh, screen space ambient occlusion and anti-aliasing turned on. Looks pretty cool. I like it. Any way I can help, Regalo Swag. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save it.
Do a couple little adjustments, just making sure things fit together nicely. Okay, any requests for something other than a stapler to put on the desk? A lamp, okay. Looks like he's got a lamp, it's pretty simple office desk lamp that won't be too hard to make okay let's do it a <laughs> bigger stapler llama i'm gonna kick you out of the chat if you suggest that one more time all right let's start this stapler in a new scene All right, let's speed run a, a uh, not a stapler. Let's speed run this lamp real fast. Let's see how quick I can do it. So Mike Willingham, what's the first thing that went through your mind when accepting your first job as a 3D artist? Uh, let's see, my first job as a 3D artist, it, it actually built so slowly that it's hard to say when my first job doing that was. Like I, back in the uh, late 90s, I, was, I had a uh, student job at the university I was attending and uh, it was at the Print Media Center. So like doing like graphic design uh, website design for the university and I got them to buy a copy of Ray Dream Studio which was like a really low budget crappy 3D software even for the time uh, but uh, but I, I got to use it on some projects and I was pretty excited about that um, 
So it was kind of a, a first. I'm just gonna do this edge flow differently. So I don't get any weird pinches. Um, and then, you know, just slowly build, I would have, I would just find like random, um, freelance jobs here and there, just like really simple stuff. I mean, we were still talking the nineties and early two thousands. Um, so it was just really basic work, not super exciting, uh, but it was something. So it's hard to say like that. I had like one big break that was, um, like a big deal for me. Still don't like how this edge flow is working. Yeah, this should work better. It's always the simple things. You think it's just going to fly right by and you're just going to be done with it. And then it's like, nope, actually it's like a bunch of little things to figure out. All right, that'll that subdivides nicely. Kinda. <laughs> nice, Shane. Didn't know there was anybody here that is as ancient as me. Oh yeah, software changed over the years. Oh, my it I mean, is constantly changing. I mean, I used to use uh there was like some UV layout software. Can't remember what it's called now. Uh like what was it called? Unwrap 3D or Pelt something. I can't even remember anymore. But uh Maya has got a pretty nice UV set for uh, uh tool set for my, uh UVs. That must be a, a Britishism. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, 
Oh shoot, did I delete the inside surface of that somehow? I don't know how that happened. Okay, yeah. Ah, uh, beaten. We put a little light bulb in there. Nah, it's not going to be seen. All right, I'm going to save it, you guys. I'm going to save it before anybody even says the word stapler. Don't even type it. So Jody Cha asked, uh, have I ever thought about adding features that I would like to have in ZBrush? Uh, yes, actually, funny you should mention that. Uh, I wrote a plugin for exactly that reason. The link is there in the chat. So uh, there's lots of features in, in my plugin, Ryan's Tools, which uh, fix a lot of the problems I've had with ZBrush. So have at it. How long did it take for me to reach what level exactly? <laughs> Good job, Llama. Way to keep it under control. I mean, I've been uh, I've been doing 
so the first time I ever used a 3D program was mid 90s. So I don't know, you do the math. <laughs> it's been like, been like almost 30 years. All right, I'm gonna make a little inbox real quick. This should be simple to model. Watch, it'll just end up being really difficult. So question from Mike Wellington, is there anything you haven't done that I still want to do in the space? Uh, I haven't even gone to space. So that sounds like, uh, no, no, I know what you're saying. Uh, what does someone in 30 years and experience long for? So there's actually a lot of stuff I haven't done. You know, I actually just barely worked on my first feature film. Uh, it's called Wendell and Wild. It uh, comes out on Netflix uh, in three days. And uh, it's in select theaters right now. If you're lucky enough to have a maybe like an independent or art theater in your town, maybe there's maybe it's playing there. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I haven't worked on a AAA game. Uh, mostly, I work in the fine art world, actually, uh, which is pretty cool. It's very different. It's actually it ends up being a lot of um, you know, a lot of one-on-one -on -one working with the artists to try to get their, their vision in sculpture form. All right, let's see if I can get the uh, shape here of the... Yeah, the inbox. I tend to make them with a little, like a little cutout depression like that. Perfect. Oh wait, that's not perfect. Wait, what happened? Oh, there's another object. I was like, why is it lower on this side than on this side? And then I go look, wait a minute. There's lower on that side. Cause there was a plane it's still in my scene. Digital fabrication team with Kyle and Tyler and those folks. I don't know who Kyle and Tyler are. I mean, I know a Kyle and a Tyler, but I don't know if it's the same ones you're talking about. gonna put one more little thing on the desk so there's three objects you know the old rule of rule of three having three objects is always 
more appealing. So I'm just going to put a little cup on his desk. Oh yeah, it is a, a sugar skull. Yeah. So, well, celebrating uh, El Dia de los Muertos over here. I'd like to keep the spirit of Halloween or Dia de los Muertos in my heart all year round. simple cup Uh, you know, I don't really know. I'm not Mexican, so I don't really know quite so much what the uh, the practices are for uh, Dia de los Muertos. I just like the sugar skull. Let's see, let's do a little bit of posing, shall we? Might be kind of hard to pose the head with the shirt. Let me see what we can do here. Got some of the uh, objects are instances, so I got to lock in those instances before posing. It's another feature of my plugin Ryan's tools. Um, just a one-click creation of uh, mirrored instances. Okay, I think everything else is ready to go. So, wait a minute, why is... Oh, <laughs> oh, that's pretty crazy. How about that? I think it's because the face still has some masked, some masking on it from when I was doing the coloring. But I just want to play with this for a little bit. Isn't that fun? We... All right, playtime's over. Let's get rid of the mask, and let's see. No, wait, why is it still? Oh, it's because I didn't have the uh, 
had selected when I got rid of the mask. All right, let's see if it works this time. Little, wait, no, why isn't it? I swear I cleared the mask. Huh, mask was still there. Oh, I hit the wrong, I hit the wrong key anyway for it. All right, third time's the charm, let's see. Yep, there we go. Does Ryan's tools work with ZBrush Core? It does not, it has to be the full version of ZBrush. Yeah, it actually wasn't the focal shift. It was uh, it was the masking. All right, so let's see. How can I angle this for maximum intimidation? That's pretty good. I like that. Looks like I won't have to move the shirt too much. Actually, it looks totally fine. I'm gonna rotate the eyes a little bit though. Whoa. Why is it doing that? Oh, you know what? Somehow I made a, I got a duplicate of my eyes. How did that happen? Okay. There, so he's staring right at you. Boom. Thanks, Ruben. It's a question from Freestyle. Uh, beginner who know basic anatomy and can do basic heads. When should I practice stylized characters? Is it harder? Um, if you want to do stylized characters, I mean, start practicing right away. Uh, along with traditional anatomy, realistic sculpting. I mean, they, they both feed into each other. Um, practicing stylized sculpting is actually going to help your realistic sculpting. And then practicing realistic sculpting is going to help your stylized sculpting. So yes, the answer is yes. Hey, clay sculpting. <laughs> Make the desk items jump when he slams his fist down. Yep. I could go into a whole animated thing with this guy. I'm not gonna, sorry. I'm gonna change one thing about his thumb here I didn't quite like. Just wanna give a little bit more shape to that. Hey, Michael Davies. Oh, 
Okay, so we just got a couple more minutes left here, uh, but I'm gonna pop it into Keyshot real fast to see what we get. Oh, I need to give some thickness on this shirt actually. details I forgot nope looking pretty good all right so just gonna get key shot ready here thanks Andreas Actually, you know what? I want to save it before I do anything like launch a uh, key shot. I learned my lesson today. So going back to your question, freestyle. Yeah, um, sculpting stylized characters actually helps a lot when doing realistic characters because there's very subtle um, stylization you can put into a realistic character to make them look even better um, than realism um, and knowing how to do a stylized character and just putting just a, a real small amount of stylization into your realistic sculpts um, really can help pop and it's it's so subtle most people won't notice that there's something not quite totally photo real about the character um, but it'll increase the believability of the sculpt. All right, popping this over to ZBrush or to, to Keyshot Bridge, rather. Hey, Edgar, good to see you here. Yep, yep, I'll be starting a new model next week. The nada regalo swag. Gracias por venir. De donde eres, regalo swag. All right, looking pretty cool here. I'm gonna try to put on a little material that's a little better for rendering. So many objects in this scene though. Let's get a metallic. Let's see.
Yeah, I'll definitely have to put more time into making this uh, render really nice, but you know, as far as just getting something real simple together, it's pretty cool. See if I can get him looking at an angle that looks good for this. What kind of background did the character have? He kind of had kind of a dark office. I don't know. I don't have time to make a really elaborate render or office for this guy, but uh, yeah, let's turn on a couple settings here. Let's see, we'll turn on denoise. And we'll just let it sit here for a couple minutes while it renders. So yeah, all kinds of stuff I could do with the render to make it better, but uh, we're running out of time. So oh, my chat disappeared for a moment. Okay, I got it back. Oh, from Peru. Por supuesto voy a ir a Machu Picchu. Claro que sí. Edgar, is going on anatomy studying sprees while doing personal projects a good thing? Of course it is. You should always do anatomy studying sprees. I've noticed I've been going off on this and losing motivation to finish projects just to do 20 attempts to practice. I mean, I mean follow your your passion, right? If your passion is to do anatomy studies, do anatomy studies. If your passion is personal projects, do, uh, do your, your projects. Um, you know, let that be the fuel that, uh, helps you learn and get better at this stuff. Steamworks. Heck yeah. All right. Prashan. Hello. Hello there. Okay. So, uh, yep. Looks like our time is just about up and this render is, uh, pretty much done rendering as well it's a pretty basic setup but uh, you guys get the idea all right thanks so much for joining everyone i'll see you next time later